<sighs> I just exhaled. I think I need some music. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Good to see everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. I hope everyone is doing well. Happy Tuesday tea. What's tea? What's tea? What's tea tea? Hey, Tawara. China says she's not doing well. What's the tea, girl? What's going on? Hey, Milagros. Hey, Justice. Eclectic. Hey, Abby. Hey, Transparency. Uh-oh. IG, let me know if you can hear me. A diamond said your skin is glowing. Thank you, girl. Can y'all hear me, IG? Hey, Brandy. Hey, Raina. Hey, Lona. Hey, Autumn. Hey, Sashi. Hey, Scary Sari. Hey, Laura. Hey, Karen. Yeah. Hello, 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 everyone. Good to see you all. Now, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Coach Anwar. I'm a dating coach for black and brown women, and I help people get their guy. Yes? So I'm going to be on here for a little bit. My session tonight with my clients um, ran a little bit later. So I'm just going to be in here for an hour, and we're going to see what the tea is. Yeah? What's really going on? So if you're new here, put your questions in the chat, and then I will answer them in the order that I see them. And um, we'll go from there, yeah? Um, if you're interested in learning more about what I do, definitely click the link in my bio. I have a link for my um, podcast. I have a link for free trainings. I have a link for uh, to book a consultation call if you want to work with me professionally. All of that. AJ said, should I sell my soul for love? No, girl. Don't do that, girl. That's what Ariel did in The Little Mermaid. And it barely worked out for her in a Disney movie. Yeah? <laughs> um, so that's that on that. Okay, let me see what's, what, what y'all asking about. Lexi said, my favorite dating coach. Thank you, girl. Angie said, you're just starting. I am. Hey, Sarah. Green Tea Goody said, where have you been? Girl, I am, I rested this weekend, girl. I rested. Patty said, hope our fairy godfather is well. I am doing really well, thank you. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Chrissy said, hey coach, we got good news. What's the news, girl, what's the news? Hey, little pretty Lulu. Hey, Belu. Sunny so that. yes, I finally got notified. Awesome. Hey, Bricasso. Yeah. Jordan said, I got my notification tonight. Happy Tuesday. I got my teacup ready. Yes. Let's get it. Let's get it, ladies. Let's get it. Oh, my gosh. Y'all already asking these questions. I need to get on it. I'm already late. I'm late. I'm late. Okay. Let me see what we're talking about. Hello, Falana. Brightest light said, OMG, you're representing my country. Oui, oui, madame. Mais bien sûr. The Shalane effect. Met a new guy. He's coming on strong two weeks in. Should I be scared? Is it game? Well, is he Nigerian? <laughs> um, no, you have to pace this shit. Like, this is your love life, and you get to let him know. What's important is that you're going to have to share your feelings with him and set a boundary. And the boundary needs to be, um, you know, I love that we get to hang out, and I love, you know, getting to know you. But I will say that I'm feeling a little bit pressured by X, Y, and Z, and then name some of the things that you are saying. And I would love for us to just slow down a little bit. After that, we're going to see how he responds to that boundary, and if he respects that boundary over the next couple of weeks. And if he doesn't, let him go. Yeah. Okay, Kat said, do you have any advice for dating autistic men? It really depends on where they are in the spectrum though, right? Because different levels require different skills. 
a band said, I love how sweet and tender you are when talking to us. Um, it's all I know. I, I try my best. You know, there's research out there that says that, you know, that the way that people learn best is through gentle love and care and not like how many of us might have grown up, which is like this authoritarian, like screaming at you, do this or else, like threats and things like that. Like there are a lot of internet personalities out there that have that sort of presence, which I actually think is a little bit manipulative because what they're doing is they're actually um, kind of poking at many of our triggers and traumas that like will put your brain in a, in a way where it's like, oh my God, my dad's talking to me or my mom's talking to me and I need to listen, right? Um, it's interesting how some, some, some people do that. Busy Missy, thank you so much for the rose girl. Um, Sarah said, how do I respond to a text from a guy who has ghosted me? I haven't responded. Nor should you. Whenever I am, when I'm coaching women, one of the things that I always tell them to ask themselves when they're in situations and they don't know what to do, and this will answer half of your questions, by the way. Would my future husband do this? Your future husband would never ghost you, girl. So... When it's up, when it's up, when it's up, and it's out. Um, okay, let me see what the IG girls are talking about. I want to ask my mortgage specialist out, but I don't know if he's even interested. Tell him, t tell him he, you have some questions about about your mortgage and that you want to talk about it over lunch. <laughs> uh, Mr. Reason T said, I need my fairy god brother right now. How do I stop ending up with unavailable and low effort men? By becoming emotionally available. You know, if you're emotionally unavailable, you will not just attract, but actually choose unavailable men because it is easier to engage with those men, one, on your side, because you don't have to be emotional, which is something that you might have fear around, and then he doesn't either. So it's actually an easier relationship for you all. Your job is actually to learn how to be vulnerable and have the emotional confidence to be able to do it. Um, when you do that, you're actually going to repel those guys because they don't even know how to hold space for you. They are like, oh my God, emotions, feelings, I can't do it, I'm out, right? That's how you do it. And it's one of the things that I teach in my program, like how to be vulnerable, the framework around that, how to communicate it, what language you should use, all of that, yeah? Okay. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Justice said, I'm completely cut off of all dating. LMAO, I'm so over it at this point. Sounds like, girl, we need to take a break. If you're over it, let it go. You know? You're never going to hear me say, power through dating. You actually won't get great results when you try to power through in dating. Caddy said, my match brought up Diddy unprovoked, then went quiet when I expressed disapproval. That's telling, girl. That is, we got to be thankful for that. We, when these men show their ass, I want you to be thankful for it. I don't want you to be like, oh my God, the audacity. I can't believe he did that. No. Oh my God. Thank you so much, the universe, God, whatever, for showing me this guy and, and how much of a, how foolish he can be before I get invested. Yeah. So the response is, oh my God, thank you so much for showing me. Taishia, thank you so much for the heart me, girl. Mm -mm -mm. Callie girl in the boots said, I love it when I see your life. Thank you, girl. I'm glad that you're here. Valana said, hi, Amor. Hey, girl, good to see you. Shalane said, I met a new guy. Okay, wait, I answered that already. Okay. Girl, I'm so lost. Right, Falana said, Ariel just escaped. Right. Girl, don't do it. Don't sell your soul. A 
heart said, I have post notifications on. I love your lives and videos, but I'm white in a five-year relationship. I'm glad that my videos are helping you grow. Yeah. Madison said, I've had a long time crush on a boy my entire junior year of college. What should I do? Um, study abroad, girl. Get out. I know that when you study abroad, you're going to have... This boy is just a boy. He's kind of like a non-factor. You get to have a crush on him, but I actually want you to like study abroad and like have five boyfriends. I swear when you come back, he's gonna he's not gonna be anything once you have those boyfriends. Girl, study abroad, learn a new language, put that on your resume and, and get ten to twenty thousand dollars more uh, for your first job. Because of it. Chris Dex said, did the family do an egg hunt? We do it every year, girl. You already know. Fiona said, only got notified on Insta. Uh-oh. Steph St Stephanish said, don't come at my country. I'm not coming at your country. I'm just letting people know that that is the way that a lot of Nigerian men operate. And everybody on this chat knows it, girl. And you know it, too, if you're being honest with yourself. Kim Swift said, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, girl. Sarah said, there is a guy I've been texting, but he hasn't asked me out yet. How do I go about this? If he hasn't asked you out in a week, he's out. It's not your job to try to make a man ask you out. Girl, that's bullying. We don't bully. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And said, I love your uh, videos. Any advice on dating as a single mother? Yeah. One of the things I always say is like, you need to take off the mother hat and put on the woman hat. And what I mean by that is like, when you're a single mom, oftentimes what will happen is that you will always be in your masculine energy because you have to take care of everything. Um, and so what, what that means is that oftentimes you will treat these men as if they are one of their, your kids and you'll be barking orders at them. You'll be take, trying to take care of them because that's just your natural inclination. You're going to have to stop doing all of that. Yeah which is like a very stark difference from your everyday life. And it can be hard to do that, yeah? Yeah, but that's, that's the work more than anything else. Obviously, get a babysitter's club too, girl, so that you can start to go out and you don't have the excuse of, oh, but I don't have a babysitter. No, you should have at least three people on standby, just in case. Let me see. Mercedes said, it's my favorite dating coach. Hey, Anwar. Hey, girl. Good to see you. Mm. Hello, Sharon. Mariana said, OMG, I need your help. I'm glad that you make this kind of content. Love you. Thank you, girl. But where are the questions, ladies? Okay, I need to go to IG because these girls are asking questions. The Renee King said, I met a guy, but it's long distance. Who should go to whom first? He should always come to you. Always. Always. Getting flown out or flewed out is not the flex. That's more of your time, more of your energy, more of your labor. If he cares about you, he'll come to you. Let him do the work. A diamond in the flesh said, where can I meet an established man that's ready for a relationship? Well, please understand this. 90% of the guys that are single are not ready for a relationship. And they're not in a specific place. Right? So part of what you're going to need to do, and I say this all of the time, but I think it's really important. Dating is not for the people that are going to half-ass. Like, you're going to have to have 100 conversations to find your person. This is on average. And many of us are literally quitting after talking with 20 guys. 
And when you start and stop, you will lose all of your momentum. And when you start again, you literally have to start from zero. So as you're dating, please understand you want to pace yourself. Many of y'all are going hard on the dating, on the apps all the time, out every, you know, three times a week or whatever. Go out once a week. Be on the apps 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. In, in terms of established men, established men are everywhere. You can meet an established man in a coffee shop. You can meet an established man everywhere you go. This is about the sort of energy that you're bringing to the places that you go, right? Obviously, you can go to conferences. You can go to, you know, different cigar lounges. You can go to country clubs. You can go to hotel lounges, you can go to airport lounges, right? Please understand, though, that just because he's established doesn't mean he's a good partner. And obviously, you know that, but I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't reiterate that because so many people are so hyper-focused on, does he have money? Is he stable? That sometimes we will turn a blind eye to some of the other more emotional aspects of a relationship. Fancy Free said, I'm ready for the tea. I know that's right, girl. Abby said, I'm getting discouraged about dating. Many people are getting discouraged about dating because dating is the hardest that it's ever been. And it is probably not going to get easier. That's why a lot of people are bowing out. A lot of people are think thinking about or focused on the this 4B movement, which I call 4M. Um, but yeah. Uh, someone said, I'm dating a closeted man. Should I do it or should I love myself? Girl, love yourself. Girl, what? As someone who has dated closeted men, nothing good can come of it. We, You're going to have to prioritize and love your journey, your healing, um, your boundaries more than you might like or love your attention. Yeah. And that's sometimes hard if you grow up if you grew up in an environment where you didn't get as much attention as you wanted growing up. And that's often the case for many black and brown individuals just because our parents worked a lot or sometimes we came from single parent households and obviously our single parent was working a lot. So there is this deep, deep emotional relationship need around attention. And so if you have that, you will lean into um, anyone in your dating life that's giving you attention, right? Intellectually, you might know better, but emotionally, you don't. And so part of your work is learning how to heal some of those inner childs so you won't continue that pattern. You'll deprogram it and create a new program, a new pattern. That's what I do in my program. If you're interested in learning how to do that, definitely book a call. Hey, you said, I texted a guy I was interested in. He's on vacay and he hasn't responded yet. Am I being ghosted? Well, first, we shouldn't be initiating text messages with guys. Let them, let them reach out to you. Yeah? Different people have different relationships with their vacations. This is the same with holidays, but as well as vacations. Give a little grace to that, right? And let's see if he, if he reaches out to you after he comes back from vacation. But... Ladies, please stop initiating these text messages and these calls. You're literally pursuing men. Don't do that. It's one of the better ways to evaluate whether a man is in his masculine energy and if he is interested in you, if he pursues you. Please understand that a man will never fall in love with you if he's not pursuing you. So every time you initiate a call or a text early on in the courtship, you are literally making it harder for that man to be your boyfriend. Literally, when you do this, his testosterone is going to start to go down. You will not rise. And his testosterone needs to be at a higher level if he is going to be bonded to you, connect with you, fall in love with you. Just FYI.
Mm, let me see what's going on here. Trendy said, I'm emotionally relationship burnt out. I tell guys not to fall in love with me. What has happened to me? I don't understand the question. Um, Katie said, do you believe in second chances? It really depends on what happened in the first chance. If nothing really happened and then you guys kind of just faded away um, and it's been a while, yeah, re-engage and see what happens. But if you all broke up for a specific reason, like he was abusive, he meaning like emotionally abusive or otherwise, um, he wasn't committed, he wasn't showing up, he was always late. Some, a lot of those things don't necessarily change themselves. Yeah? Some of these guys don't have love home training. And y'all know what home training is. Yeah? So I've said, gone on six or seven dates, really hit it off. He said he was very interested in crickets. So this is what I would consider. Now, depends on how long the crickets have been. If it's like, if it's been like three days, three to five days, don't freak out. If it's longer than that, he's not interested anymore and you're going to have to throw him away. But if it's only been about three days or so, please understand that he's probably in the pullback phase. This is what happens when men's testosterone lowers. It means that he's connecting with you. He's bonding with you. And he needs to figure out if he can live his life like this um, and still like accomplish the things that he wants to do in his life. So the biggest mistake that women make when that happens after like the six or seven date um, is that he'll come back and then people will cop an attitude. Well, where have you been? Hey, stranger. Why did you do that? Blah, 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 blah. Don't do that. Just let them know, hey, how's it going? I was worried about you. Hope you're doing well. Keep it moving. Yeah? That's how you navigate that pullback phase. Dulcie, thank you so much for the rose, girl. Kay said, well, Kay, Cassie said, how do I get as many boyfriends as possible? Um, well... Anybody can get a boyfriend. That's easy. You just lower your standards and you can get into a relationship tomorrow, right? This isn't about quality. This isn't about quantity. This is about quality, right? And so please understand that the way that you get quality boyfriends is making sure that you're working on yourself, healing yourself, so that you're the person that is ready for the best relationship of your life, which is really the focus and objective of, of my programs. Yeah. Kel said, why do I feel like Hinge is low-key the new Tinder? Hinge is the worst. If you're a black woman, don't go on to Hinge. It will not serve you. I've been saying this for almost a year and a half to two years now. Please believe me when I tell you this. Z said, every time your videos show up, your advice is always on point. Thank you, girl. I have been doing this work for 14 years, so I hope it's on point. <laughs> Z, thank you so much for the 10 TikToks, girl. I appreciate it. Laylee said, how do you spot a golden retriever boyfriend? A golden retriever boyfriend is going to be energetic. He's going to have big eyes. He's going to be jumping around. He's going to be enthusiastic about everything. And he might, like, he might be annoying if you're a black cat. If you're someone who's, like, sarcastic and a realist, as they call it. He's the initial, like looking at him from a distance, you're probably going to be turned off. That's the crazy thing about golden retrievers, that you actually have to get to know them because those golden retrievers will bring out the fun little girl inside of you that you are desperately trying to find. Many of us have been, especially if you're that oldest daughter in the chat, let me know if you, you're, you are that oldest daughter that's been parentified and has literally had adult responsibilities since the age of 10 or 12. Um, it's hard to get back into that little girl mode where you can just exhale and just like be. That, please understand that those golden retrievers will allow you to do that and allow you to feel safe while exploring those fun little girl parts of yourself that you haven't been able to do. That's why that partnership works so well. But like you can find them anywhere. Generally, they love sports. They love animals. 
So like go to a dog park, go to SeaWorld Grawl, go to a zoo. <laughs> Literally, golden retriever, go to a dog park. Um, they love sports, go to sporting events, go to sporting sport bars. Uh, they love playing intramural sports. So join those leagues, right? They like to volunteer too. And he said, are you French? No, but I live in Montreal, so maybe I'm a, a tad French. It's me, Dee. Thank you so much for the five roses, girl. Your mom said, he's going at a slower pace, th pace than me. Should I slow down? No, but you should have specific time boundaries for how you want things to go. One of the things that I do, I have some videos in um, you know, my profile around time boundaries and dating. Check those out. I think they'll, they'll be really important for you. But having those boundaries will help you not have to second guess, like, you know, what you should do in certain situations. Yeah. Mysteries and tea. Do we ladies need to stop giving the benefit of the doubt? Is it just, is it really just excuses? And when they show us a behavior for the first time, just believe that's who they really are and act accordingly? Well, it depends on the actual like situation, right? If it's like a pure misunderstanding, um, it's one thing. And that's where you would set a boundary. And then if he disrespects that boundary again, he's out, right? But it really depends on like what the actual action is. But I'm always interested in the why. Why do we get benefits of the doubt, right? And what I have seen, let me, girl, I gotta charge this this phone before it goes out, honey. Anytime my phone tells me that it has 20%, I, it feels like I'm about to die, honey. Freaks me out. Um, so when people are giving people the benefit of the doubt, please understand that that's a learned behavior and that you probably needed to give your parents the benefit of the doubt because of some of the actions and words that they did or said that didn't make you feel loved. So this is partly an inner child wound, but this is also partly a vulnerability opportunity for you, right? If you're giving the benefit of the doubt, it is often because um, you're not showing your full authentic self in your life or in your dating life specifically. And so because you're not doing that and you have these, these high walls up, what I've learned in the work that I've done is that you have your real self behind these walls. And so when you see someone show up as they are, you think that there's something behind those walls and you don't take it for what it is. You're trying to see if there's something different behind what's being shown in front of you. But in reality, what you actually need to do is just take everything that these guys are doing and saying at fa like face value and just honor that, right? And But the way that you do that is by literally lowering your walls and strengthening your boundaries. Yeah. Which is really difficult to do, but this is something that we do. We focus on, we learn how to do that in my program. So if you're interested, definitely check the link in my bio for that. Chrissy B, thank you so much for the five roses. Mm, Randy said, why do men initiate, engage, but don't pursue? Because most of these guys, the reason why they're single is because they don't have follow through. A lot of women will think, oh my God, these guys are not, they're abandoning me, they're ghosting me. This is why they're single. This is exactly why they're single. Don't make it about you. If you make it about you, you will never find your person because you will continue to like be triggered and think like you're shit and that you're not deserving of love and you'll just continue to quit and you'll kill all of your momentum. Please understand that it's mostly these guys. Kashia said, how to get over a situation ship. I still care. You still care because in your mind, you thought it was a relationship. And you have to realize that it wasn't. You also have to understand that like, if a guy is putting you in a situationship, 
he's disrespecting you. Many of us don't really think of a situationship as disrespectful. It's one of the most disrespectful things that a man can do because men know that women, if they're dating, they're looking for something serious because women are looking for love and have sex along the way and men are looking for sex and fall in love along the way. So he already knows that you're looking for something serious. And so what he has done is he has dangled a carrot in front of you. And that is like the shittiest thing that he could do. So please... And, Please understand, you're caring because you you thought that this guy like really cared about you and was serious about you, and he wasn't. And I'm saying this with all of the love and all of the respect in the world. I'm sharing this with you so that you understand that like, it was never going to be something because he already put you in a category. So now you get to put him in a category, which is the trash. You hear me? Oftentimes, in our minds, we think it's a relationship. So, like, you're thinking about this as a breakup. You can't break something up that was never put together. You literally are in the same situation that you were in before. No committed relationship. Okay. Okay. Um, people are asking about 4B. So this is a movement that's happening in South Korea right now. Women are um, protesting. There, uh, there's inequality in that culture. There is a 45% domestic violence rate in marriages in that culture. Um, and so they said, basically, no marriage, no mothering, no dating, no sex. And the birth rate has gone down significantly and it's affecting the economy. And so a lot of people in the West are talking about wanting to do that here. The gag is that a lot of people are already doing it here. It's just like not a 4B movement. It's like more of like a 1B or a 2B. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what are my thoughts? My thoughts are that, like, in the West, people are half doing it anyway. That's why there's so many single people here. Um, I think that, especially in the Black community, that is something that needs to happen. That's the only way that I think Black men will evolve um, into something different on a, on a grander scale. Um, that's why, you know what's so interesting? Spike Lee is really a genius because he literally made a movie about this, I wanna say 10 to 12 years ago, called Chirac, where basically um, women stop having sex with men to regain their power. I always tell women, and this is why I work with them, because I want to remind them, I want to in inspire them, I want to motivate them, I, I want them to know that you have really all of the power in the in in love in romance and it is through your boundaries it is through your no that you get to yield that power yeah yeah so um because men know men know that you have all of the power and uh you know i think a lot of men most men have never heard of the 4B movement, but it's starting to gain traction. And, you know, when I'm hearing some of these panelists talk about that, um, they um, these men are kind of freaking out about it. I mean, they already are freaking out now. That's why they're so angry and lonely and upset. Um, but if y'all were to double and triple whatever's happening now, girl, they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. Girl, they'd be part of my team, girl. Yeah, because that's what men do when they don't have access to women, whether it's jail or the military. They just go for the guys, girl. They don't care. <laughs> if I'm lying, I'm dying, girl. If I'm lying, I'm dying. Anyway, I hope that, that helps to clarify. Definitely look it up. Um... 
Yeah, girl. This 4B movement, it is not a natural hair movement. <laughs> Vanessa said, and why I was denied for coaching, but I'm ready. Well, definitely send me an email um, at anmore at getyourguidecoaching.com and we'll definitely try to have you have a consultation. Okay. Madam Alexa said, trade. Yes, honey, trade. Let me see what y'all are talking about here. Autumn said, so many gems in this life. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Kasha said, I know. I know, girl. I'm right there with you. Situationships are hard. Hard as shit, girl. It does hurt. It does hurt. One, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, four. Said, Anwar, are you speaking to me? Good. 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 That's why I'm here. Yeah. Russia said, you're so good. Thank you, girl. I don't know what this emoji says. How can I approach a white boy in a feminine way because I like him, but he doesn't know? You're going to have to let him know. Don't, I don't want you to think about, like, these white guys, they en engage with you differently. They're going to engage with you in, like, a friendship energy. They're not going to be, like, aggressive or assertive like other men might be. So the way that you, you're going to show your interest is giving friend energy, Right? You're thinking, oh my God, I need to be feminine in this very romantic way. That's not how they're going to engage with you. They start with a friendship foundation first, and then they slowly move to something a little bit more serious. Yeah, so it's going to be a little bit slower, girl. Yeah, that courtship. So don't go all lovey-dovey in your femme energy. That's not going to work. Actually, you want to be a bit more assertive to let him know that, uh, you know, I'm interested in hanging out with you in a friendship level. And after you establish that, then you want to kind of engage a bit more. Devin, thank you so much for the paper crane girl. So Mars that you are healing the girls, honey. I hope so. Wild Heart said, I want a 4B here in the US, LOL, meow. Yeah. Chelsea said, why are the bro why the bros are mad? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chirac, that was the name of the movie. Heather said, love you. Can you navigate 15, 20 pound weight gain in three to four months since last pick on profile? Do I tell him? Mm, no, just update your pictures, girl. Update your pictures. If y'all are gonna first do a FaceTime date first so that he sees like what you look like now so that he can make an informed decision about if he wants to um go out with you or not yeah sasha said men are starting to panic this week yeah they are and they've had this here's the gag because the num there are fewer men than women and this really starts in college yeah uh, that's when they start to have more of the power in dating and in relationships because there's fewer of them than there are of women. And so that's why there's so much hookup culture. Um, but literally, if every woman said, mm, no, I'm not doing that, do you understand? They would go crazy. They already are crazy, girl, no shade. But that's your power. Um, oh my gosh. Does everybody remember that, that song by Jackie O? It's called, and I'll do it in the TikTok rated version, Punani Real Good. Anyway, that song is the anthem, honey. 
<laughs> it's power. It's power. Yes, Nookie, Nookie, real good. That's right. Yes, Jackie O. I mean, that was. I didn't have. I didn't have any Nookie in college, but I was still singing that song like I did, girl. E Bailey said, "Will this live be on your YouTube?" Yeah, probably. I put all the lives there. A day or two afterward. Mimi said, I'm a black girl and an Indian guy showed interest in me. Any tips to not be awkward? What to expect? Um, so, first of all, if you're awkward, own it. <laughs> you Being awkward and quirky is actually a very important part of being in your own main character energy. Every protagonist, every main character is awkward or quirky in their own way. And the girls who like are trying to not do that and perform for men, it does it actually comes off more awkward. Girl, own your awkwardness. Like, you know, in Miss Congeniality when she has like that snort laugh, like that's, she's the protagonist. She's the main character, but she has that quirk. So lean into that girl because your guy is actually going to find that very endearing. And what I know about this in terms of the relationships and what I love about love is that your person is going to absolutely love the thing that you hate about yourself, which is crazy. So like, for example, like I've, I've hated my voice forever. My partner loves that. He loves that. It's crazy. But that's what it looks like, right? So you actually want to put those things on Front Street to see if he's gagging on your quirk or not. So um, be awkward with the Indian guy. And that is actually a really great strategy to see if he's, if he's gagging on you or not. Yeah? Nia Brown said, how do I know if it's a rough patch or if he's just not interested anymore? Is this someone that you're in a relationship with or that you're just dating casually? Glow Maps said, you are so experienced in this coach. Great advice and so true on white guy's way of dating. Yeah, girl. In my program, I would say two thirds of my clients will get with black guys, but a third of them will get with non-black guys, right? So um, it's just, it's a different experience. Melanie Travels says, is sexting in an early relationship something to be worried about? When you say early relationship, is this a committed relationship or are you talk talking about the courtship? Azorable said, Anwar, I started talking to someone at the bar and got his number. He's not really for me and I'm going to express that to him, but I, but like I'm getting the practice finally. Awesome, girl. I love that. Okay, dating casually. Um, so if... If y'all are sexting, it means he's already put you in a category. He put you in a good time category. Because he, he would never do that with someone that would be potentially his wife. So at this point, I would just let him go. Okay. Fatty White said, Hi, and we're watching you from Paris. When should I tell guys I'm waiting for marriage to have sex? probably close to um, either like on a phone date or the first date. Yeah, you actually don't want to wait too long because um, that was like, he's going to feel like it's a waste of time if that's not what he's into. And there are going to be a good number of people that are not into that. So you want to do that fairly early. Riley said, hey, babe, I love your videos. Thanks. Thank you. Madam Alexa, white men don't approach me. Should I care? No, they're not going to approach you because they think that if you're a woman of color, if you're a black woman specifically, 
they're gonna think that you're not into them. That's why they don't approach you. But they're checking for you. They're checking for you. At least a third of them are, yeah? So just because they don't approach you doesn't mean that they don't like you. If their feet are pointing toward you, it means that they're interested in you. That is um, a, um, that is like a body language 101. Okay, Melanie Travel Tales. And where I was the one who asked about sexting. We met in January and have been exclusive for one month. Okay, sorry. I think I uh, mixed up some people. Um, well, if you've been in a relationship, then sexting is fine. But if you're only in the courtship, that's not it. Sorry for the confusion, y'all. I got about a thousand people I'm trying to work with here, honey. Um... Clary Bell said, I missed you, fairy god brother. Y'all, I just didn't come on live on Sunday. Come on now. Thank you. So I think it's a Buddha said, you got to teach me how to flirt. I'm a teen, by the way. I'm not teaching teenagers how to flirt, girl. I'm going to teach you how to get an A in your math class, but I'm not going to teach you how to flirt. Not now. We'll wait until college, girl. Ban said, Anwar, everything you say is true. Thank you, girl. I try. Vanessa said, are we still taking a break from the apps? We never necessarily took a break from the apps. We just maybe deprioritized them. At least that's what we did in my program. Alan said, so do we flirt with the white guys the way that we practiced in the last live? 100%, girl. 100%. Ever fabulous said the movie is pronounced Chirac. Okay, thank you, girl. Thanks for the correction. <laughs> uh, I said, I'm in a situation ship because he's supposed to move soon. Is he playing me? Yes. A situation ship is playing. Nia Brown said, Hi, Amor. My question was, how do I know if it is a rough patch or if he's just not interested anymore? We're casual, not dating. Well, if it's casual, is there any sort of, is there expectations around it? It seems like you're putting expectations on something that's quite casual. And I don't necessarily know that that should be the case. If there's a rough patch in something casual, then we shouldn't be engaging with it. Yeah? I guess my question for you is, what do you consider a rough patch? What does a rough patch mean for you? That's my question. Hera P said, the guy I'm talking to deleted his dating profile after we met. Is that a red flag? Really depends. What I've seen is that like 50% of the time, it might mean that like he is not really interested in you anymore. And then 50% of the time, it's just like something that they do. Yeah. Sarah said, tips on talking to men when feeling intimidated. Well, I guess my question for you is like, what is intimidating about men? It sounds like we might be putting them on a pedestal. Victoria, thank you so much for the 11 ice creams. Mm. PR by Natika, thank you so much for the four finger hearts. Jess said, should you always block your ex? I would recommend it, especially right after a uh, breakup. I think that no contact is really helpful. I think you need space, you need time to actually transition your identity from someone who is in a relationship to a single woman. And that perspective will help you understand how you want to best navigate this person and your life moving forward. 
uh, Tree Vima said, I'm headed to Berlin in September. What app should I be on or where do I go? Um, definitely stay around Alexanderplatz and Hakkasha Macht. Um, I lived in Berlin for a while and that's like the cent city center. Um, go to any club that, that highlights black music. That's like R&B, rap, that's what they call it. Um, and like, you'll literally get proposed to like three times every night. It's literally the thing that I did that changed my dating life and my mindset for the rest of my love life. Literally, literally a week after I graduated college, I went to Berlin and lived there for a year and got my entire life. And I, that's why I think like travel is so important, especially for your love life so that you realize, especially if you live in the US that like, no, there are people out there that will live for you, that will treat you like a goddess. And that's what happened when I was living in Berlin. I was like, oh, I'm it. I, I didn't know because America literally was treating me like it was 1920. Yeah. Um, and so um, I came back to the U.S. with this mentality and it just stuck. Yeah. But yeah, Berlin will get you together real good, girl. Mm, okay. Let me see what's going on here. Meow, thank you so much for the two roses. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, Mike Kay said, how to ask for compensation. So I don't really do that sort of coaching. That's not my thing. You might want to like engage with someone like Shira Seven for that. Yeah, she's more into transactional relationships. I am not. Maya Leo said, Anwar, where do you go outside to meet people? I'm in a new city. Online is hard and not my thing. Girl, do things that you love, right? Also, like what like what are those things? Like what does your personality tell? Like what are you giving? Are you more intellectual, more emotional, more traditional, more playful? One of the things that I do in my program is um we get a clear understanding of what the flirt style is for each of my clients and then align where they go to to their flirt style so that it becomes a natural, seamless process for them to engage with these guys in different places. Marty B said, Amor, white guys keep smiling at me and being very chivalrous. What does that mean? They, it means that they like you, girl, that you better engage, that you're missing opportunities. Victoria said, are you ignoring me because I'm not brown enough, babe? Nope, that's not it. I have 955 people in this live, and if I've answered a question already, I don't repeat myself. Sweet Tiff said, your thoughts on the prevalence of poly uh, polyamory in the LGBTQ community. Um, that has been going on for a very long time. Um, and I think it is also, I think it's more for the men and less so for the women. At least that's been my experience. You can let me know if I'm completely off there. And I think it's because men can easily compartmentalize sex versus like emotion and feelings. Like they're literally in two different categories. And I think that sometimes um, for women, that's not necessarily the case. It's just like bodies react differently to those things. Um, Lils, thank you so much for the rose. Alex said, the white men definitely check uh, for me on the apps, but never in person. So please understand, like use that app experience as evidence that these white guys are checking for you because they really are. Sometimes we like, we're reminded of like elementary school and high school where the boys were not like, you know, outwardly checking for us, but girl, the gag is that they were. They just didn't have the confidence to step outside of their friend group and really truly pursue you. Because they were kids, but now they're not.
Declan said, had a small misunderstanding and he's pulled back. Do I ask to talk or give space and pull back too? Oh, it really depends on like what the misunderstanding was because you're saying it's a small misunderstanding, but it might be a big misunderstanding to him. Hera, peace out. We love you. Thank you, girl. Madam, Madam Alexa said, Anwar, you are so real. I love you. Thank you, girl. Uh, Aida said, Hi, Anwar. Which dating apps do you recommend? I don't really recommend any right now because none of them are really hidden, to be honest with you. You are the best dating app. Go outside, girl. Touch some grass. Touch some men. Nicole said, I'm almost 40 and can't flirt. I literally had a session tonight with my clients all about flirting. That's so funny. You're gonna, we're gonna have to practice. We're gonna have to practice. Yeah. Love. Uh, Marig said, does dating a cis hetero man the same as dating a gay man? Why do you know so much? Well, I've been a dating coach for 14 years now. And as my mother would say, a man is a man is a man is a man. They literally operate the same way. That's the gag. Um, they think in the exact same way. So it's actually like very crazily similar. Someone said, white guys sometimes are just nervous. In my experience, you have to initiate. Yep. And you definitely will have to initiate with any Asian man, girl. Please understand that. Because I know some of the girls in here, they live for the Asian guys, honey. Honey, they'll die for a Korean man, honey. Like it's the Korean war up in here. Yeah, you're going to have to initiate that. They, they're not going to initiate anything. They won't even look you in the eye, girl. They'll do one of these. But they'll be staring at you. Peripheral tea, girl. Peripheral tea. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> what time is it? I'm already, am I acting out? Is it 12? Yes, honey. Cinder fellas come out, honey. Cinder fellas come out. <laughs> Oh, Lord, give me the strength. I can't. I can't. I'm doing too much. Me said, how can I work with you? Book a consultation call. The link is in my bio. And we'll hop on the phone and see if it's a good fit. Yeah. That's what the T is. Um, anyway. <laughs> oh. Yes, girl. I said it. I'll say it again. The Korean War. And what? And what? <laughs> Jacqueline said, you are too much. Or am I not enough? That's the question. Yeah. Valada said, what the hell do we do with peripheral tea? That's what I'm saying, girl. <laughs> it's like green tea. Right? You got to drink it up. You got to soak it up. Anna said, let's go invade. I know that's right and wrong at the same time, girl. You must be American. You must be American, girl. With all that mess. Invade. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, ma'am. Denise said, and where they're closing TikTok, where else do you go live? I, I doubt that that's really going to happen. Um... And I actually think, I think that Facebook is behind all of this, to be honest with you. Um, but I don't think that that's going to happen. Um, I'm, I'm on YouTube and I'm on um, Instagram, by the way. Ayana Kai said, I live for fairy god brother Amor's lives, honey. I know that's right. Mm-hmm. 
JVXOXO said there was definitely a, a Korean guy at the gym working out super close to me and peeping. They peep. Korean, Korean people love black culture, girl. They love it, honey. So they're always going to peep. This way. Not this way. Yeah. Shante said, I love, 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 love your lives. Thank you, girl. Morgan said, I know that's right and wrong at the same time. It really is, girl. It really is. User Nicole said, you seem very intuitive and spot on. I try my best, honey. Melly said, I love TikTok and Cinderfella. I know you do. I know you do. Mm, mm, mm. said, peripheral, it's giving creepy. Monica said, I just subscribed to your, I think, YouTube. Thank you, girl. Mm. Ananda said, hey, Anwar. Hey, girl. Victoria said, I'm dying here. What's going on, girl? Oops. Uh-oh. I have to verify this, that I'm a human. Okay. All right, ladies. I need to go to bed. I have my tennis practice in the morning time. I'm trying to stay snatched up in here, honey. You know I've had three children, so I have to keep this body together. Right? So that's my tea. A few more questions and then I'm going to go. Valencia, you look amazing. Thank you, girl. I literally, I probably lost about 10 to 15 pounds. You can't see it, honey. Um, but, uh, yeah. That little tire, honey. It's giving flat tire tea. Um... <laughs> uh, Yes, honey, yes. Snatched for the gods and for my man, honey. He likes it snatched. Let me see what's going on here. Okay, someone asking me about long distance tips. So, a couple of things. One, he has to come to you and he needs to come to you um, within 46 months of like y'all getting to know each other. Yeah. Uh, two, don't get into an exclusive relationship with the guy after the first meeting. You need to have at least two meetings with him. In terms of communication, because you all are not together, like in the same vicinity, you guys need to be, um, you need to be chatting. You need to be on the phone. I think I represent like a phone, like a FaceTime date as like a third of a date. So if you have three FaceTime dates, it's like a real physical date in my book. Yeah. Chris Deck said, how good of a tennis player are you? I used to be like a junior champion when I was living in Southern California. I grew up there um, and I was like captain of my high school team. We were like, I was in the hall of fame of my county i was really good so i'm getting back into it honey yeah helena said there's agent t that'll help take care of that what that snatched yes honey i know that's right mm, mm, miss mm. mm. adams said hi i've been binge watching your podcast i love it awesome 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 mm. Wait, someone's... Hold on, let me see what... Wait, I'm trying to, like... Oh, my God, there's so many questions. I'm getting overwhelmed. Mm. Someone said, uh, give us an overview of the program. If you go to the application page, it'll have a question about each and every program that I have. I also have all of that information um, on my website. So go to the Get Your Guy Coaching, getyourguycoaching.com, and it'll have a section in under work with me. It'll go through all of the different programs and courses. Yeah. 
Polanis, I love the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for supporting the podcast too. Yeah. All right, loves, I'm going to bed. Uh, Shantae said, are Korean men carry on or personal item? Definitely personal item. Definitely personal item. I'm trying to find what a Korean guy looks like. Do you see this little fob? That's what it's giving. It's not K-popping, if you know what I mean. It's K-flopping. <laughs> Dan said he's so facts. The reason you get with a Korean man is because of that tight ass face, honey. They give face, they give hair. You do not get with a Korean man and they will hold your pocketbook as you're walking down the street. You do not get with a Korean man because he is doing anything in that bedroom. Am I lying? Now this is the shit that I take very seriously. <laughs> Yeah. Girl, Korean men have that jawline, tight ass face, girl, gorgeous eyes, hair to die for. Like you want to cut it off and use it for your own. But anything down there, girl, psh, what are we doing? Kat said, we appreciate the research. You're welcome, girl, because I've had to work mighty hard for you all and for myself. And for all the men. Yeah, Koreans have, that's what I'm saying. You, you get with a Korean man because of the face and you want to steal his um, skincare routine, but that's about it. Someone said, well, yeah, they're out. <laughs> Someone said, we can't have it all, honey. Yeah. Anyway, hopefully that answered someone's question about the Korean men, honey. Someone said, thank you for your service. You're welcome. Mac Musley said, and we're still not as heated as he is about the Samoan. Yeah, honey, because I came in, I came in to the Korean guy knowing what it was. The Samoans, my expectations were here. And then they went down here, girl. Anyway, don't get me started. Don't get me, don't even get me started. All right, my loves, um, I'm going to see you. I'm probably not going to be on live this Sunday. I am traveling with uh, my family. I'm going to a my best friend's birthday this weekend. So, um, but I'll come back next Tuesday. Yeah. I hope you all learned something in this session besides that Korean men ain't, ain't doing it and doing it and doing it well. Um, but beyond that, have a good night, get some sleep, and I will talk with you all soon enough. Okay. Tyranny, the name of the podcast is called the Get Your Guy Coaching Podcast. Alrighty. All right. Bye-bye.